Earlier, I shared with you the story of my son who was having serious problems in school. Sandra and I were deeply concerned about his apparent weaknesses and about the way other people were treating him. But those things were in our circle of concern. As long as we focused our efforts on those things, we accomplished nothing except to increase our own feelings of inadequacy and helplessness and to reinforce our son's dependence. It was only when we went to work in our circle of influence when we focused on our own paradigms that we began to create a positive energy that changed ourselves and eventually influenced our son as well. By working on ourselves, instead of worrying about conditions, we were able to influence the conditions. Because of positive, because of position, wealth, role, or relationship, there are some circumstances in which a person's circle of influence is larger than his or her circle of concern. And that's where the circle of the circle of influence is, on, is the main circle, and the circle of concern is within the circle of the circle of influence. Same size as the circle of influence was. This situation reflects reflects a self inflicted emotional myopia. Another reactive, selfish lifestyle focused in the circle of concern. Though they may have to prioritize the use of their influence, proactive people have a circle of concern that is at least as big as their circle of influence, accepting the responsibility to choose their influence effectivity. Direct, indirect, and no control. The problems we face fall in one of three areas. Direct control, problems involving our own behaviors. Indirect control, problems involving other people's behavior. Or no control, problems we can do nothing about, such as our past or situational realities. The proactive approach puts the first step in the solution of all three kinds of problems within our present circle of influence. Direct control problems are solved by working on our habits. They are obviously within our circle of influence. These are the private victories of habits one, two, and three. Indirect control problems are solved by changing our methods of influence. These are the public victories of habits four, five, and six. I have personally identified over 30 separate methods of human influence as separate as empathy is from confrontation, as separate as example is from persuasion. Most people have only three or four of these methods in their repertoire starting usually with reasoning and, if that doesn't work, moving to flight or fight. How, liter how liberating it is to accept the idea that I can learn new methods of human influence instead of constantly trying to use old, ineffective methods to shape up someone else. No control problems involve taking the responsibility to change the line on the bottom on your face, on our face, to smile, 
to genuinely and peacefully accept these problems and learn to live with them, even though we don't like them. In this way, we do not empower these problems to control us. We share in the spirit embodied in the in the embodied in the alcoholics anonymous prayer lord give me the courage to change the things which can and ought to be changed the serenity to accept the things which cannot be changed and the wisdom to know the difference whether a problem is direct indirect or no control we have in our hands the first step to the solution changing our habits changing our methods of influence and changing the way we see our no control problems are all within our circle of influence expanding the circle of influence it is inspiring to realize that in choosing our response to a circumstance, we powerfully affect our circumstance. When we change one part of the chemical formula, we change the natural of the results. I worked with one organization for several years that was headed by a very dynamic person. He could read trends. He was creative, talented, capable, and brilliant, and everyone knew it. But he had a very dictatorial style of management. He tended to treat people like gophers, as if they didn't have any judgment. His manner of speaking to those who worked in the organization was Go for this. Go for that. Now th now do this. Now do that. I'll make the decisions. The net effect was that he alienate, alienated almost the entire executive team surrounding him. They would rather they would gather in the corridors and complain to each other about him. Their discussion was every was all very sophisticated, very articulate, as if they were trying to help the situation. But they did it endlessly, absolving themselves of responsibility in the name of the president's weaknesses. You can't imagine what what's happened this time. Someone should say, the other day he went into my department. I had everything all laid out, but he came in and gave totally different signals. Everything I'd done for months was shot just like that. I don't know how I'm supposed to keep working for them how long will it be until he retires he's only 59 someone else would respond do you think you can survive for six more years i don't know he's the kind of person they probably won't retire anyway but one of the executives was proactive he was driven by values not feelings he took the initiative, the, he anticipated, he empathized, he read the situation. He was not blind to the president's weaknesses, but instead of criticizing them, he would compensate for them. Where the president was weak in his style, he tried to buffer his own people and make such weaknesses irrelevant. And he'd work with the president's strength, his vision, talent, creativity. This man focused on his circle of influence. He was treated like a gopher also. But he would do more than what 
was expected. He anticipated the president's need. He read with empathy the president's underlying concern. So when he presented information, he also gave his analysis and his recommendations based on that analysis. As I sat on as I sat one day with the president in an advisory capacity, he said, Stephen, I just can't believe what this man has done. He's not only given me the information I requested, but he's provided additional information that's exactly what we needed. He even gave me his analysis of it in terms of my deepest concerns and a list of his recommendations. The recommendations are consistent with the analyst, and the analyst is consistent with the data. He's remarkable. What a relief not to have to worry about this part of the business. At the next meeting, it was go for this and go for that to all the executive but one. To this man, it was what's your opinion? His circle of influence had grown. This caused quite a stir in the organization. The reactive minds in the executive corridors began shooting their vindictive ammunition at this proactive man. It's the nature of reactive people to absolve themselves of responsibility. It's so much safer to say, I am not responsible. If I say I am responsible, I might have to say I am irresponsible. It would be very hard for me to say that I have the power to choose my response and that the person I have chosen has resulted, has chosen, has resulted in my involvement in a negative con- collusive environment especially if for years i have absolved myself of responsibility for results in the name of someone else's weaknesses so these executives focused on finding more information more ammunition more evidence as to why they weren't responsible but this man was proactive toward them Two, little by little, his circle of influence toward them grew. Also, it continued to expand to the extent that eventually no one made any significant moves in the organization without that man's involvement and approval, including the president. But the president did not feel threatened because this man's strength compl- complemented his strength and compensated for his weaknesses so he had the strength of two people a a complementary team this man's success was not dependent on his circumstances many others were in the same situation it was his chosen response to choose circumstances his focus on his circle of influence that made the difference. There are some people who interrupt proactive to mean pushy, aggressive, or insensitive, but that isn't the case at all. Proactive people aren't pushy. They're smart. They're value-driven. They read reality, and they know what's needed. Look at Gandhi. While his accuser were in the legislative chamber criticizing him because he wouldn't join in their circle of concern, rhetoric condemning the British Empire for their sub subjugation sub subjugation of the Indian people 
Gandai was out in the rice paddies, quietly, slowly, imperceptibly expanding his circle of influence with the field laborers. A groundswell of support, of trust, of confidence followed him through the countryside. Though he held no office or political position through compassion, courage, fasting, and moral persuasion, he eventually brought England to its knees, breaking political damnation, breaking political domination of 300 million people with the power of his greatly expanded central of influence. The haves and the bees. One way to determine which circle our concern is in is to distinguish between the haves and the bees. The circle of concern is filled with the haves. I'll be happy when I have my house paid off. If only I had a boss who wasn't such a dictator. If only I had a more patient husband. If only I had more obedient kids. If I had more degree. If I had my degree. If I could just have more time to myself. The circle of influence is filled with the bees. I can be more patient, be wise, be loving. It's the character focus. Anytime we think the problem is out there, that thought is the problem. We empower what's out there to control us. The change paradigm is outside in. What's out there has to change before we can change. The proactive approach is to change from the inside out to be different and by being different to affect positive change in what's out there i can be more resourceful i can be more diligent i can be more creative i can be more cooperative one of my favorite stories is one in the old testament Part of the fundamental fabric of the Judeo-Christian tradition is the story of Joseph, who was sold into slavery in Egypt by his brothers at the age of 17. Can you imagine how easy it would have been for him to languish in self-pity as a servant of Potiphar? To focus on the weaknesses of his brothers and his captors and on all he didn't have. But Joseph was proactive. He worked on B. And within a short period of time, he was running Potiphar's household. He was in charge of all that Potiphar had because the trust was so high. Then the day came when Joseph was caught in a difficult situation and refused to compromise his integrity. As a result, he was unjustly imprisoned for 13 years. But again, he was proactive. He worked on the inner circle or on being instead of having. And soon he was running the prison and eventually the entire nation of Egypt, second only to to the pharaoh i know this idea is a dramatic paradigm shift for many people it is so much easier to blame other people conditioning or conditions for our own stagnant situation but we are responsible response able to control our lives and to powerfully influence our circumstances by working on B, on what we are. If I have a problem in my marriage, 
what do I really gain by continually confessing my wife's sin? By saying I'm not responsible, I make myself a powerless, powerless victim. I immobilize myself in a negative situation. I also diminish my ability to influence her. My nagging, accusing, critical attitude only makes her feel validated in her own weaknesses. My criticism is worse than the conduct, the conduct I want to correct. My ability to positively impact the situation weathers and dies. If I really want to improve my situation, I can work on the one thing over which I have control, myself. I can stop trying to shape my shape up my wife and work on myself, my own weaknesses. I can focus on being a great marriage partner, a source of unconditional love and support. Hopefully, my wife will feel the, the power of proactive example and respond in kind. But whether she does or doesn't, the most positive way I can influence my situation is to work on myself, on my being. There are so many ways to work in the circle of influence, to be a better listener, to be a more loving marriage partner, to be a better student, to be a more cooperative and dedicated employee. Sometimes the most proactive thing we can do is to be happy, just to genuinely smile. Happiness like unhappiness is a proactive choice. There are things like the weather that our circle of influence will never include. But as proactive people, we can carry our own physical or social weather with us. We can be happy and accept those things that at present we can't control while we focus our efforts on the things that we can the other end of the state. Before we totally shift our life focus to our circle of influence, we need to consider two things in our circle of concern that merit deeper thought, consequences, and mistakes. While we are free to choose our actions, we are not free to choose the consequences of those actions. Consequences are governed by natural law. They are out in the circle of concern. We can decide to step in front of a fast-moving train, but we cannot decide what will happen when the train hits us. We can decide to be dishonest in our business dealings while the social consequences of that decision may vary depending on whether or not we are found out. The natural consequences to our basic character are a fixed result. Our behavior is governed by principles. Living in harmony with them brings, position, brings positive consequences. Violating them brings negative consequences. We are free to choose our response in any situation. But in doing so, we choose to we choose the attendant consequence. When we pick up one end of the stick, we pick up the other. Undoubtedly, there have been times in each of our lives when we have picked up what we later felt was the wrong state. Our choices have brought consequences we would rather have lived without. If we had the choice to make over again, we would make it differently. We call these choices mistakes, and they are the second thing 
that merits our deeper thought. For those filled with regret, perhaps the most needful exercise of proactivity is to realize that past mistakes are also out there in the circle of concern. We can't recall them. We can't undo them. We can't control the consequences that came as a result. As a college quarterback, one of my sons learned the learned to snap his wristband between plays as a kind of mental checkoff whenever he or anyone had a setting back mistake. So the last mistake wouldn't affect the resolve and execution of the next play. The proactive approach to a mistake is to acknowledge it instantly, correct and learn from it. This literally turns a failure into a success. Success, said IBM founder T.J. Watson, is on the far side of failure. But not to acknowledge a mistake, not to correct it and learn from it. Is it is a mistake of a different order? It usually puts a person on a self-deceiving, self-justifying path, often involving ra- rationalization, rational lies to self and to others. This second mistake, this cover-up, empowers the first, giving it disproportionate importance and causes far deeper injury to self. It is not what others do or even our own mistakes that hurt us the most. It is our response to those things. Chasing after the prisoner's snake, Chasing after after the poisonous snake that bites us will only drive the poison through our entire system. It is far better to take measures immediately to get the poison out. Our response to any mistake affects the quality of the next moment. It is important to immediately admit and correct our mistakes so that they have no power over the next moment and we are empowered again. Making and keeping a com- making and keeping commitments. At the very heart of our circle of influence is our ability to make and keep commitments and promises. The commitments we make to ourselves and to others and our integrity to those commitments is the essence and clearest manifestation of our proactivity. It is also the essence of our growth. Through our human endowments of self-awareness and conscious we become conscious of areas of weaknesses, areas for improvement, areas of talent that could be developed, areas that need to be changed or eliminated from our lives. Then as we recognize and use our imagination and independent will to act on that awareness, making promises, setting goals and being true to them we build the strength of character the being that makes possible every other positive thing in our lives it is here that we find two ways to put ourselves in control of our lives immediately we can make a promise and keep it Or we can set a goal and work to achieve it. As we make and keep commitments, even small commitments, we begin to establish an inner 
integrity that gives us the awareness of self-control and the courage and strength to accept more of the responsibility for our own lives. By making and keeping promises to ourselves and others little by little, our honor becomes greater than our moods. The power to make and keep commitments to ourselves is the essence of developing the basic habits of effectiveness. Knowledge, skill, and desire are all within our control. We can work on any one to improve the balance of the three. As the area of intersection becomes larger, we more deeply internalize the principles upon which the habits are based and create the strength of character to move us in a balanced way toward increasing effectiveness in our lives. Proactivity, the 30 day test we don't have to go through the death camp experience of frankel to recognize and develop our own proactivity it is in the ordinary events of every day that we develop the proactive capacity to handle the extraordinary pressures pressures of life it's how we make and keep commitments how we handle a traffic jam, how we respond to an irate customer or a disobedient child. It's how we view our problems and where we focus our energies. It's the language we use. I would challenge you to test the principle of proactivity for 30 days simply try it and see what happens for 30 days work only in your circle of influence make small commitments and keep them by be a light not a judge be a model not a critic be part of the solution not part of the problem try it in your marriage in your family, in your job. Don't argue for other people's weaknesses. Don't argue for your own. When you make a mistake, admit it, correct it, and learn from it immediately. Don't get into a blaming, accusing mode. Work on things you have control over. Work on you, on B. Look at the weaknesses of others with compassion, not accusation it's not what they're not doing or should be doing that's the issue the issue is your own chosen response to the situation and what you should be doing if you start to think the problem is out there stop yourself that thought is the problem People who exercise their embryotic embryotic freedom day after day will little by little expand that freedom. People who do not will find that it withers until they are literally being lived. They are acting out the scripts written by parents, associates, and society. We are responsible for our own effectiveness, for our own happiness, and ultimately, I would say, for most of our circumstances. Samuel, Samuel Johnson observed, the fountain of content must spring up in the mind, and he who has so little knowledge of human nature as to seek happiness by changing everything but his own disposition, will waste his life in fruitless efforts and multiply the grief he proposes to remove. Knowing that we are responsible, responsible, is fundamental to effectiveness 
and to every other habit of effectiveness we will discuss. Application Suggestions 1. For a day, for a full day, listen to your language and to the language of the people around you. How often do you use and hear reactive phrases such as, if only, I can't, or I have to? Second, identify an experience you might encounter in the near future where, based on past experience, you will probably behave reactively. Review the situation in the context of your circle of influence. How could you respond proactively? Take several moments and create the experience vividly in your mind. Picturing yourself responding in a proactive manner. Remind yourself of the gap between stimulus and response. Make a commitment to yourself to exercise your freedom to choose. Third, select a problem from your work or personal life that is frustrating to you. Determine whether it is a direct, indirect, or no control problem. Identify the first step you can take in your circle of influence to solve it and then take that step. Four, try the 30 day test of proactivity. Be aware of the change in your circle of influence. The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, Powerful Lessons in Personal Change, Stephen R. Covey. Turnpike Plaza, 365 Rec Squad.